Okay, let's continue by taking this uh, set of classes that we've created and converting it to Python. So currently we've got this file, it's a Scala file that we've uh, created in Eclipse that has a number of classes. It's got a trait called symbol, got an object called epsilon that extends symbol, got a class non-terminal that extends symbol, got a class terminal and non-terminal, each of which extends symbol. We've got a class that's a rule that uh, encapsulates a left-hand side and a right-hand side. And then we've got a grammar object that encapsulates a couple of functions, read rules and read rule. And then finally, we've got the main that just does the boilerplate that we need it to. Okay, so let's start uh, simple. Let's go, let's start with symbol. Okay, and so we're gonna open a new file, uh, okay, and we'll do a Python 3 file, okay, and we're going to have a class uh, called symbol, okay, and we're, instead of using a trait, we're just going to make it a, a regular class. the two string. So Python uses a little bit different syntax. Can't remember, we can look it up. It looks like underscore underscore str. Okay. So we'll start there. Uh, let's add the is epsilon method. Is epsilon. Okay. And uh, here we'll rely on uh, a Pythonic way of doing things to so the none value. So let's say that if a uh, symbol is initialized and value is none, then we will treat that as epsilon. So uh, if self.value equals none, then return true, else return false. Okay, and then we'll change this for the string if uh, self dot is epsilon then we'll return the string epsilon otherwise we'll return value okay so there we've got our symbol class okay and next let's do non terminal that inherits from symbol. Okay. Okay. Uh, so now we need to figure out how to do inheritance in uh, Python. Python inheritance. This is the situation for a more complicated inheritance model. Here we've got person, employee, inherits from person, and we're going to explicitly call the superclass, superclasses constructor. So def init self value, and we're going to call symbol dot init 
self value. Okay. Now at this point, we might ask ourselves whether we even need this separate class hierarchy. So in Scala, there was a good reason to use symbol, epsilon, terminal, and non-terminal all as separate categories, and it's because of the type system is doing static type checking for us, which means that there's going to be some really nice things that we can do later on uh, involving pattern matching uh, because of the fact that we have this static type system. Uh, but in Python, we don't have static type checking, so we're going to go ahead and say, you know what, this we could do this, but there's going to be a lot of overlap. For example, when we look at here at this non-terminal class, we're inheriting from symbol, but what really does it get us? And the answer is it really doesn't get us anything. Um, so we'll go ahead and say, for this Python implementation, we're not even going to bother. What we could do if we wanted to is have uh, an extra definition here that is is non-terminal self and if self dot value starts with uh, so if the zeroth element so let's see we'll start by if is epsilon If self that is epsilon, then return false. If we're epsilon, then we're not a non-terminal. Otherwise, we will look to see if self dot value at zero is uppercase. So Python check for uppercase is upper is upper return true else Return false. Okay, and then we could have, if we want, def is terminal self. That is, if self dot is epsilon return false. Otherwise. Return not is non self dot is non -terminal. Okay. All right. So there's our symbol class. What else do we need to do? We want a rule class. Okay. So that's going to be pretty simple. Class rule. Def init self left hand side, right hand side. We don't specify the types. Okay, and what do we need to do for the two string? Def Turn. Okay, and how do we do string interpolation in Python? Python three string interpolation. They can do with format. Okay, looks like with Python 
which let's check to see if we're using 5.3.6. Let's check on the server. Point four, so we can't do it there. Um, so we won't use string interpolation because we want to make sure this works on the server that we're using. Okay, so we will take the left hand side and convert it to a string. Okay, so plus, and then we want the arrow literal. Plus, right hand side is going to be a list of non terminals hand side, how do we do string, uh, do the equivalent of make string here, Python string join okay. so the S here is going to be what we want to join it with. So that is going to be a space dot join. And right hand side. Okay, so we'll try that. Uh, so let's test it out. So left hand side equals non terminal and P. Right hand side equals a list. This was how we did a list in Scala with just the list notation. So let's check create list literal in Python. Okay. You can also go to the terminal if you want to check. L equals A B C Yep, like that. Okay, right hand side. Okay, so left hand side with the determiner. The noun rule equals rule left hand side, right hand side. Okay. Rule okay. non terminal is not defined. And I need to use symbol instead of non terminal. Expected string sequence instance found. So here, join is expecting a, a list of strings, and right now we've got a list of uh, symbol objects. So we can fix that by doing a uh, Python list comprehension Oops. 
yar for sentence and then okay let's try that still didn't like that okay let's test the string syntax and see if that's the problem. Okay, so we're here in, in source and let's start up a Python interpreter and import our class, my grammar. Okay, and it's not liking something. So let's create a new symbol, s equals symbol and p. Didn't like that. Okay, let's try from my grammar import simple. And it's still not liking something. What's it not liking? Let's comment some stuff out and see if we can figure out what it doesn't like. Okay, that's good. Okay, so now Okay, so it's not liking my string method up here. So let's figure out why not. Table of contents for Python documentation. Look for classes. Classes. Underscore underscore init is a special thing. That's the sort of thing we want. And let's change this so that instead of value, it returns the literal string value. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Okay, that seems to work. Yeah, I think that's gonna be fine. But just to be safe, we'll do that. Okay. And now we'll say left hand side strings, right hand side strings equals this. And I let's put parentheses in there. There we go. All right. Self dot value equals value.
Okay. All right. Okay, so now it's working. The only question is, why is it giving us epsilon for everything? Uh, because we don't want epsilon for everything. We want the symbol to use the value that we provide when it prints it up, when it prints itself out. So let's let's check to see what's going on. So init should be saving the value that we provide in self.value. If self dot is epsilon, return epsilon, otherwise return self dot value. There we go. Let's try that. There we go. Much better. All right, so now we've got uh, a rule, and now we're going to read in all of the rules from the file. Okay, so let's create a method that reads a line and provides a rule. Okay, so this is going to be very similar to the grammar dot read rule in the Scala version. Okay, so we're going to take parts equals line dot split. Okay, let's test the syntax here. Line equals np dtn line dot split. Okay. Okay. All right, we'll just stick with the default split. So line dot split. It's going to be parts. Right hand side, left hand side. It's going to equal parts sub zero. And let's see if. If parts dot the length of parts is greater than one, we'll do one thing else, we'll do something else. So if it is not greater than one, that means we have an epsilon rule. And we're going to return a rule with the left hand side and none for the right hand side, which will give us an epsilon rule. Otherwise, we're going to take those parts. So we will say the right hand side is going to be equal to a new, I'm sorry, a symbol. Uh, with the right hand side string for each right hand side string in parts from one to the end. Okay. And then return rule with the left hand side and the right hand side. Okay, so let's try that over here. So let's say rule equals read line np dtn. Okay. 
and it works. Great. Okay, so now let's do read that read lines. Okay, and let's see read lines from file in Python. Okay, so there's a number of ways of doing it. Uh, try to find the best way with open as file. That looks pretty good. With open as file, for line in F, print lines. Okay. And rather than having lines here, we're going to have file name. So we're going to open file name as f. And that will take care of closing the file for us for line in F. rules equals this and we want to append to this in Python just call append rules.append rule so if we don't need to do that we'll just call read line so another way of doing this saying rule equals read line line that's going to give us a rule and then we're going to append the rule and then return rules okay all right, so now we can get the argument. So sys.argv if the length of sys.argv is less than one all right the first one is going to be the script so we want it to be less than it's less than two and we print usage uh, please provide file as argument else file name equals sys.argv1 for rule in read lines file name Import sys. Import sys. Okay. 
Okay. None type is not iterable. All right. So in the string we, sh we checked for is epsilon. Right hand side string for right hand side in self dot right hand side. None type object is not iterable. Ah, right here. This none needs to be inside a list. There we go. So right now we have the equivalent code in Python as we have in Scala. And the Python code is considerably shorter, but the Scala code has some additional type information uh, that will come in handy later. Um, so that's all for now.